All right, let's talk about the Indianapolis Colts loss to the Houston Texans. They are now out of the playoffs. The Texans are in the playoffs. So uh, credit to Houston. I already made a video talking about uh, you know Stroud and what he was able to do. But let's do the other side. Let's talk about what went wrong and what went right here for the Colts. Kind of a eulogy of their season uh, here and what was a very competitive game and a very hard fought game. So we'll get to the good, the bad, the ugly at the end. Yeah, let's just jump into it. Let's start off with this play. What's going to happen here is it's, it's zone coverage, and, and this is definitely a way that Houston was able to limit the Colts' offense, I thought. This is Alec Pierce running a quick route over the middle. That's what Pierce is trying to do here. It is zone coverage, but you see how the cornerback in the area is playing a little bit far off. So this route could potentially work, just kind of trying to get underneath. Watch as when Minshew takes the snap. You see that right here, there, again, is there a window? Is there not a window? Well, you can see what Minshew sees, right? Pierce has a chance at the very least, but the defensive back does seem to be getting ready to move in. Minshew gives Pierce a chance, but Steven Nelson, the corner on that play, that wins his matchup, is able to make a play happen. And that's definitely uh, why Indianapolis' offense, you know, when it wasn't going, was because of sometimes stuff like that. Just having someone on the outside win. And, you know, I always kind of beat the table and say games are won on the outside. Well, you got to be able to find times to win on the outside. Pierce had another opportunity here where it's going to be, it's actually an interesting concept by Houston. So they, they like to play their zone coverage, but we'll mix things up every now and then. They're showing a cover zero, which means no safety deep, you know, everyone blitz unless you're playing man. Uh, but in this scenario, they're going to have a couple players who are showing us that are blitzing and drop back into coverage. That being said, there's still no one covering down the field. So if Pierce's route being a deep shot right here, I mean, it's definitely worth taking a look at if you're Gardner Minshew. So when his play begins, Minshew's going to take a snap. He does a good job at scrambling outside the pocket. He throws off balance for sure. I mean, this is not an easy throw, but there is a bit of a window here for Pierce. I'm not saying anything wide open or anything, but definitely the kind of thing where you'd love to give him a chance. You'd love to see if he can make a play. However, this is just an overthrow. I mean, that's just, that is what it is. Uh, he missed that one. So because of the missed throw, uh, not able to make it happen. And, and instead, you know, the, the penalty was on the Colts. So wouldn't have counted anyway, but at least you would have forced the Texans to accept the penalty. You would have, you know, I don't know, a third and 20. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered. But just in general, not getting stuff like that to, to work. Like this plays another example where what's going to happen here is it's going to be a, uh, you know, a deep shot on a second down and 15 in a 14 to 3 football game, 54 seconds left. Okay, got the situation. But again, here, there could end up being a one on one matchup with our guy, uh, cornerback Steven Nelson, once again. Minshew takes a snap, and Mo Alley Cox, the uh, tight end who's running the route that we're talking about, gets quite frankly wide open. So I'm not sure exactly why Nelson misplayed this the way he did, but there is a window, and if Minshew hits this, it's a touchdown. It's just, this is a touchdown, a bull pass, I guess I would say. And it's just a missed throw. I mean, that's just what it is. It's, uh, he overthrew it a tad. That would have, at the very least, gotten you inside the 10 with plenty of time to try and punch it in, uh, and probably gotten you into the end zone for a touchdown if it was right on the money and complete, but that did not happen. So, you know, not good stuff there. And also something like this, where what's going to happen here for the Colts is it's a third down and four situation. And, they're going with Jonathan Taylor, which, like, listen, Jonathan Taylor, like, I get why they were going with him. Like, the, you know, the, the times he was getting the ball, it was usually being pretty effective. So, like, sure, get the ball in his hands. But this is just the issue with trying to run, a, you know, an offense entirely through a running back is it sets up third down and fours like this, right? Which isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, a passing offense that isn't working sets up third downs and tens. So, you'd rather the third down and four. Minshew is going to take the snap. He is going to flip the ball to Jonathan Taylor. And honestly, right here, it feels like there's a pretty decent chance that this can work out. But you see one Houston player gets a hand on him. Uh, Taylor gets around that guy. But because he was slowed down, other players were able to come through, tackle Taylor before he gets the first down. So again, when you run that kind of offense, it means that you just, you almost have to be perfect. And there were times when Houston was able to uh, get stops right there like they were on this one. 
But going over here, okay, if you want to talk about explosives and the, you know, the issue with a running game, blah, blah, blah. Well, what's a way that a running game can work? Well, if you can get explosives through the running game, right? And that's what they're going to try and do here, where it's actually a pretty interesting situation. So you see that Houston player, he's going to be blitzing on this play. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that makes sense. Kind of one of those lottery situations, uh, a player blitzes, uh, but that ends up taking them out of position. And that's how you're able to get a big run. Well, actually, kind of the opposite is going to happen. Watch as he's going to move in, and while he doesn't actually make the pressure, he kind of clears out the other Colts offensive lineman out of the area because they had to, you know, work on him. So, you have a situation where there's a Houston player right at the line of scrimmage. Make a tackle here, even if you don't tackle him right away. Only gaining a couple yards on this play. It's a good situation. But watch as Taylor gets by him, and that's when there's really trouble. Because Houston kind of saw the good situation, maybe took their foot off the gas a little bit. And at this point, containment has been completely given up. There's a couple of Houston players in the area, but Jonathan Taylor already has a full head of steam, and they do not. As you see, Taylor blows by them. That's just a huge play to you know make that first guy miss and then be able to have the speed to get past everyone else. Uh, again, sometimes football is that simple. Sometimes it comes down to one player making a play. That defender makes a tackle there. It's legitimately only a gain of a couple of yards. But since he was able to you know make the guy miss, since Taylor was able to make a move, he instead gets a touchdown. They go for two and tie the football game here. But while the overall rushing statistics were certainly very good, there were moments where it didn't work out. Of course, it's never going to be great on every snap or zero snaps. Uh, in this situation, it's a second down and 11, and it's that double team block, and then someone's supposed to get off the block to cover to block a linebacker. That's the way this play is supposed to work. Before we get to it, though, we should just mention the situation. It's a second and 11, and they're running. I mean, this is very committed to the running game. This is basically guaranteeing you're going to have a third down, probably a third down and long, right? I mean, in fairness, Houston does have two safeties deep, so maybe you feel like you can get like an eight-yard run or so. But, you know, chances are you're looking at third and medium uh, upcoming. Minshew is going to give the ball. This is actually Moss uh, who takes the snap. But again, you look right there and the interior defensive lineman for Houston. I mean, there's no getting around it. He's holding here. You don't see this called on defensive linemen like ever, but it is a penalty every now and then it does get called. Uh, I mean, he's just he's holding the offensive lineman trying to get up to block the linebacker. That guy right there who is, you know, now completely freed up. So, okay, you could sit here and make, you know, sort of if you're Indianapolis, say, ah, should have gotten called. But just in general, you know, what does basically everyone on the football field do? Try to see what they can get away with. And here, this is not going to be, you know, not going to go for too many yards. And now you have a third and long situation. And, you know, even if he got blocked out of the way, I still don't know if that's going to go for a ton of yards. It sets up a third and long. They don't convert. Have to settle for a game-tying field goal. A play like this on the two-minute drill, obviously so huge, where it's a third down and five situation, and, you know, they're going to give the ball to Taylor. I'm assuming this is one of those, hey, it's four-down territory situations, and maybe Houston isn't ready for this. As you see, they give it to Taylor, and at first, it doesn't look like it's going to go for much. I mean, you're seeing this saying, okay, fourth down and two, let's see if Indianapolis can pick this up, but here is just the strength of Jonathan Taylor. Well, actually, that's not true. Uh, offensive linemen kind of are in on this play, too, but watch what they're all going to do. Look at how he has pushed forward, and he does some of the pushing as well. Uh, there was a sideline angle they showed for just a brief second, but it did look to me like they did, in fact, get the first down. I think it was the correct call by uh, the... Officials there, I thought they got it right, uh, but just, you know, again, really good stuff there by Taylor. Of course, the drop at the end, that's kind of going to be, that's what people are going to talk about, and, and, you know, it wasn't the best throw for Minshew either. I mean, to me, this is, uh, it's still a drop, I would say. I, I, I think it's more on, I mean, okay, you could argue it's a bit behind. You got to make that catch, you just do. And, like, listen, it's easy to say that from up here, right? I mean, if you're in a situation where the game's on the line, I'm, I guarantee you I would have dropped the pass if I had to, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it is kind of a bit of a, you know, a tricky spot. That being said, if you're a Colts fan, you're probably sitting here saying, I don't care. You're paid to catch a football, catch a football. Well, fair enough. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, a bitter end to what was a great season for Minshew and the Colts. And this is one that I do think Colts fans will kind of look back at years to come, uh, at, you know, in a way of this was a fun season for sure. But yeah, I mean, there's just there's no denying it. It was a devastating way to lose. But yeah, those are my thoughts on everything that happened with the Colts in this game. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.